when I went to that Texas coalition to abolish the death penalty, I was shocked at person after person, African American, got up and defended the death penalty. I mean, vigorously defended it. I was just shocked. I was. I thought it would be the other way. Uh, I, I was not so. I was surprised that, and that's what made me want to help them. They, I think that their panel was a little weak. Cause see, you, you cannot oppose a death penalty by saying scripture don't allow it. Cause scripture does. It's in there. Jesus could have said don't do it, but he didn't. He could have said it's wrong, but he didn't. The only way we're going to abolish the death penalty is that it's the same system they used to abolish slavery. Slavery would have never been abolished on the Bible because the Bible allows it and it condones it. It's going to be when people's hearts change and realize that this is affecting more people than just the person we kill. That by executing my father, you not only put some devastation in my life and my brother's life and my mother's life, but you're going to pass on a level of stress even to our own children. That wouldn't have happened had you just let him die in prison. If he'd have died natural causes in prison, um, we wouldn't have the animosity. Or And for me, it was an encouragement. Because remember, I was on the wrong side. So this encouraged me to kind of go straight and stay straight. Because I, I do realize full well that, that, that they're going to know who I am. And if the criminal justice system ever could get me again, they would probably try to keep me. So I, I go out of my way to make sure that I don't become involved in any way with the criminal justice system. Um, because I know that, yeah, they would, they would, you know, they would probably try to keep me. And, and so I think that the death penalty, um, it will be abolished. I think hearts are changing. I think if you keep doing this, let people see what this is doing to other people outside of them. And then just think, it costs more to execute them than to keep them for the rest of their life. Um, and, and so we should go to that. We should go to life without parole. And we have it in Texas now. Lock them up, throw away the key. I don't have a problem with that. I don't keep them, but I just think that 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 the 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 mindset of killing people, regardless of innocent or not, will be disseminated from the government unto local people, and and to the point now that we have people killing innocent people. I think there would be less incidences of that if we didn't if we were not killing people. We wouldn't have people so many people killing people. So I, I will. I, I look forward to the opportunity to uh, stand against the death penalty to anybody. I, I can tell you that if you're going to deal with people who've been affected by it, then you have to use, encourage them like my father encouraged me to use it in a positive way. You know, let the negative feel, because you're going to have strong emotions from this, but let them encourage you. The days you don't want to do your homework, you do your homework because I'm going to show them. The day you won't, don't want to keep this job, you don't want to hold your family together, you do it because you can show these people that I'm not going to have a devastated life. Because they expect that children of executed people uh, will, will experience devastation in their life. They will. They'll, they'll make bad choices because there's going to be a lot of emotions with it. And, and there's just not a lot of venues, healthy venues, to express that emotion. There are a lot of unhealthy venues that you can express the rage and anger you have with the government that you feel has defrauded you. But there are not a lot of positive ways to do it. Except that you turn it into a negative, turn a, a negative into a positive.